wonderful gifts. Everybody's got stuff, and everybody needs a place to keep their stuff. Um, problem is, is that uh, boxes look kind of boxy, and uh, you need to dress them up a little bit in order to, uh, in order to make really great gifts. I'm going to show you three different corner treatments for ordinary uh, mitered boxes. The, the, the joints of this box have been uh, mitered, 45 degree angles, and um, uh, the, uh, the glue joint, as you, as you well know, is not particularly strong, and usually you spline a glue joint like this so that the box will last. In this case, however, we're going to make the splines on the outside where out of contrasting wood so that they can be seen. Um, the first joint I'm going to show you uh, is how to make a, um, a just an ordinary spline on a dado or a um, table saw. It doesn't matter, either one. We're going to clamp the box to this jig that I've got. The, the jig holds the box so that the corners are at a 45 degree angle from the uh, from the table. Now, we'll come over here and going to feed it across like this. Now the um, first thing that I've got to do is I've got to zero out my dado. Now I don't need a lot of accuracy on this just to just for the cuts to be consistent. So I'm going to bring the fence up to where it just kisses the dado blade, clamp it down, and go to my indicator and adjust that so that the zero line is right at the indicator mark. I'm going to move this over a quarter of an inch, and we should be ready to make our first cut. And we are. Let me turn this on. Now I'm going to move it over exactly one inch to one and a quarter inches. Now, obviously. I'm spacing these dado cuts out every inch. That's not, uh, that's not necessary. It's just a choice that I have made. You can space them any way that you want. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Nor does it matter if you do them evenly. You could do some of them closer together than the others, and it would still look just fine. You could do regular dados, standard dados, or avant-garde dados. I know I made uh, three passes and magically got six dados. I cut the other three earlier in the uh, earlier in the day. Uh, now those dados I will fill with um, with some walnut splines. We'll get to that in just a little bit. First of all, I'm going to show you how to make another type of shape. This time, we're actually going to route um, a dovetail shape. in there. 
Now, I've got uh, this shopsman set up with the dovetail, uh, the dovetail bit here. Now, the dovetail bit is actually sticking up above um, the table in such a way that the cutting surfaces are about about um, uh, eleven sixteenths uh, above above the table. Now, the reason for this is uh, that the corner itself is three quarters of an inch above the uh, above the table, and I need the uh, dovetail bit to uh, go through the corners uh, at uh, with enough uh, with and uh, leave a dovetail shaped. Uh, a dovetail shaped groove there. The bit actually will ride in these dados that I've, I've made and we're going to uh, use the anchor fence actually this is a good use for the anchor fence to, um, uh, to cut these uh, dados. Let me bring this over here. Now, I've already zeroed out the anchor fence. I'm going to once again because I'm, I'm, I'm uh, following dados that I've already made, I'm going to cut these in uh, one inch, uh, space one inch apart. Now, <clears throat> something, that you, uh, uh, something that you need to know is that I have, I'm actually going to feed this by drawing it back towards me. Um, I need to feed this against the rotation of the bit so as the bit does its cutting, it holds the jig and the box against the fence. Uh, if I were to pass it in the other direction, the, jig, the router bit would actually be pushing the, uh, this assembly away from the fence. Um, it's, uh, it feels, I've, I've run through this before, it feels, it feels safe. Um, as long as, as an operation doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't uh, seem to, uh, to put you off balance or you are out of control, you can either pull a piece towards you to cut or push it away from you. All right. Let's see. Am I? Oh. Let me, I have to, a uh, little bit of a anti-climax there, folks. I have the, uh, so I have the saw plugged in and haven't plugged in the, uh, the router. <laughs> ah, the joys of live webcasting. This one inch. folks. Six, count them six, uh, nice uh, even uh, splines, uh, all dovetail shaped. Now in a little bit I'm going to I'll put a dovetail shaped spline in there. When it's uh, sanded down it'll look like Arizat's dovetails, but it'll be very strong. It'll actually make this, make this joint just about indestructible. <coughs> put this back over here. Let me I'm going to roll this out and roll one more in.
Okay, how would I index a deeper or a shallower box? Okay, uh, obviously all of these, um, yeah, I know, I, I hear you, Katie. Uh, obviously all of these boxes are, um, are six inches wide. And the, um, the uh, jig that I've made is six inches wide. You would probably... Uh, you could either shift the box back and forth in this jig if it was if it was deeper, which is something I wouldn't necessarily recommend, or you could simply make the jig as wide as the box is deep. These things aren't really practical for huge wide boxes. Um, they're, the, uh, uh, they're better for, for small boxes, and then they aren't all that practical for really, really teeny tiny boxes. Um, <coughs> <laughs> but uh, you make the jig to fit the box. It's as, sim it's as simple as that. And then you just do some math. Um, here, <clears throat> I've, I've built this jig. This is actually sort of a half version of what you've seen before. And uh, this is a drill guide. And I've decided to put um, a, uh, uh, dowels through the corners so that uh, the dowels will create splines. Whoop, hang on here. I had uh, the um, the uh, uh, I've got seven dowels now. I, I, if you had been counting, I made six dovetails and six dados. Uh, but here, I decided to use half-inch dowels. The reason is is because if I use too big a dowels, you'll see them on the inside. Uh, the, really, the dowels have to be uh, a lot less. Uh, in diameter than the uh, than it is across the miter. Uh, these this is half inch stock across the miter. It's about three quarters of an inch, so I'm using half inch dowels. That's about as big as I dare get. Uh, the uh, I've decided to space the dowels every three quarters of an inch, so I've got seven holes there. But you could um, you can space them in any way that you want. You could. You could, and I'll show you how to do this a uh, little bit later on, you could overlap them. Um, <clears throat> so indexing is, is completely up to you. And uh, right now, I'm just showing you the simplest type of indexing, and that is putting it something every, uh, every uh, evenly spaced across the, uh, across the width of the corner. All right, let's make a couple of these holes. serve another purpose besides just holding the wood at the proper angle to the bed or the or the cutter. They also back up the wood so that there's uh, uh, less tear out on the on the uh, back. Now they uh, they because of the angle at which the drill bit goes through the corners here, you uh, you may need to do a little work with a gouge to clean up the feathers here. There we go. Not bad. 
so the uh, so there's um, whoop, 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 let me show <laughs> okay there you go there's seven holes across across the uh, the corner now let me let me show you what comes next let's go to the workbench some uh, half inch uh, thick stock that will fit in the uh, in the grooves. I want a nice I want a nice tight fit. Uh, so what I did is I cut it a little bit wide and then um, and then ran it through the planer just taking off a whisker at a time until it fit the way I wanted it to. For the for the for the uh, dovetails I cut a dovetail wedge. Uh, our dovetail bit is uh, is 11 degrees, the slope of it, and so I just tilted the table at 11 degrees and uh, ripped this uh, from a from a board, cutting uh, cutting the board and then reversing it and cutting it again. And this will fit in these in these dovetails. As you can see, it's a little tight. I made it that way so that I could fit these dovetails. I just take some sandpaper here and take um, the dovetail splines. Let me get this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And simply rub this on the sandpaper until I get it to fit into the uh, into the dovetail groove. Uh, then I'll then I'll glue it in place. It's actually the same way with the dowels. Uh, this is some walnut dowel stock. Uh, you can you can find this fairly easily. I've got here's a here's a uh, bunch of dowels in different uh, species. There's walnut, maple, uh, cherry, and oak. There, uh, the dowels. I have found tend to be just a little bit larger than the than the holes. So when you do the dowels, you have to do exactly the same thing that I did with the with the uh, the splines, and that is uh, sand them a little bit, rolling them as you sand them until you get them to fit in the holes without. Uh, and here you don't want too much pressure because there's so little stock in that corner that you don't want that uh, that dowel to uh, to push that uh, wood out. Once once all the splines are cut, fitted, and glued in place, you let the whole kit caboodle sit for a day. And uh, once it's dry, the glue is set up as it is here. You can knock off the excess. Uh, take a flush cut saw, or uh, I found uh, by experimentation that uh, using the Dazuki is. Uh, oh, wait, I guess this is a Ryoba. here to the belt sander.
All right. I've got the belt sander turned off. <clears throat> okay? <laughs> okay, uh, guys, I apologize. The, the, the screen probably went black there for a minute. We, uh, we uh, blew a fuse. Apparently, the belt sander is on the same uh, circuit as our lights. Um, <clears throat> if you want to come in close here, you can see what these corners are going to begin to look, the, the look uh, like. Uh, there's, the, uh, there's half of the, now these, these haven't been sanded obviously as much as they need to be, but there's, uh, there's the, the uh, dowels. Uh, here we've got just the ordinary uh, dados, and there we've got the uh, Airzats dovetails. Uh, as you can see, a lot of possibilities there. I'd like to show you something real quick. Just keep the uh, camera there. This is a nutcracker box that I made a while back. Um, it's For some reason it's full of pen parts now, but uh, it, you, it uh, does a good job at cracking nuts if, uh, um, if you want to use it for such. <laughs> that was uh, trying, to, trying to blow the dust off the camera. And she huffed and she puffed and she blew the camera down. Okay. This is... Uh, um, the, uh, actually, I made this just with an ordinary ripsaw blade. Uh, I angled the table and I cut three angled slots at 30 degrees. Then I put a piece of walnut in each slot, glued it, let it dry. Then uh, I, I cut off the excess, sanded it down, went back, and, and cut three more slots, this time at the opposite uh, 30 degrees. I put in a piece of paduke in each one of these, let it dry, cut it off, and when I sanded it, I had this effect that makes it look like the corners are laced together. Now, you can do this, uh, obviously, with any shape. Uh, for example, uh, we were talking about uh, the uh, the round shapes. Uh, you could have you could put some splines in there and then go back and overlap and put and put maybe smaller splines. Maybe a uh, there's walnut and cherry. Maybe you could put a maple dot in between each of these. Or you could or, or you could uh, you don't ha it doesn't have to be a, a geometric progression. You could you could uh, just do it freeform. Uh, if you look at the, if you look at the blackboard, you'll see that I have actually put an idea for inlaying dado splines. I made a box like this once where I cut a three-quarter inch wide dado, um, went back, and then cut a half inch wide dado in the middle of the three-quarter inch wide spline, okay, uh, filled that up. Uh, with wood and went back and cut a quarter inch dado in the middle of the of the half inch spline um, so that I had had three different types of wood all stacked up in a in a single spline. You can also do that with um, with uh, dovetails. There are uh, bits that you can get that are in progressive sizes where you can put uh, a, uh, a large dovetail spline in, fill the spline with wood, let it dry, uh, sand it, and then, and then fill it again uh, with a, with a uh, uh, cut it and fill it with a smaller wood, um, a smaller, a smaller uh, uh, groove. So uh, at any rate, <clears throat> It's a, uh, there are a lot of things that you can do with this technique, and it's, it's dead simple. It, the, uh, it's just the limits are your own imagination. Mm -hmm.